Hi everybody, my name's Claire from Rainbow Acrylics. Thank you so much for joining me for this video. Um, I'm a little bit sad because I think this is going to be the last pour I'm going to do in my autumnal range. So I've done five paintings now, all with an amazing autumn um, colour scheme. And I decided to do the same scheme, but lots of different techniques. So I've done five techniques so far. Today is going to be the sixth and I think probably the final one in this series. So I feel a bit sad um, unless anybody else has any ideas of what else I could do, what other technique I'm willing to give it a go. But otherwise, this is the last one. So it's going to be a good one. Um, I'm going to be doing some blooms and I'm going to be doing them in a kind of spiral shape. I've done some Dutch pours in a spiral before, but not. Well, and actually I've done one bloom painting in a spiral. Um, but not on a smaller canvas like this. So I'm hoping it's going to look like um, autumn on a windy day and there's a, a bit of a, a spiral of leaves um, spinning around with the wind. Um, so that's the plan. So let me show you the colours I'm using. So just look at the warmth of these colours. So as I said, my base colour, uh, De La Rowney Graduate Acrylic Pearl White. I've then got, oh, put them in a different order. I've then got some Amsterdam colours. I've got bronze, pewter, permanent blue violet, and permanent red violet. I've got two Pebio Studio acrylics colours. I've got the iridescent orange yellow, and then the iridescent gold, and then two other De La Rowney colours. So the phthalo turquoise and the oxide of chromium green. So I'm going to mix these all to my Dutch pour consistency, which means mixing it with flood flow control. So I'll put the recipe for the mixtures in the description of this video for you. So I've covered my base, my canvas in the base colour, in the pearl white. It's a 40 centimetre square canvas, um, which is the same as all the other um, paintings in this series. So what I'd like to do is create somehow a swirl. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is just get some push pins, what I did last time is get some push pins and place them on the canvas just to map it out roughly um, and uh, just as a guide. Right, I've changed my mind, I'm not using push pins, I've got some wool and I'm hoping, I've used wool before um, and I'm just hoping it's not going to leave any fluff in my paint. Um, right, I'm going to start, I think I'm going to start in the centre and as I said, all I'm doing is putting this down as a guide. So because I want to get a spiral, spirals have, it just has to be right, it has to be perfect. Um, so it's just going to guide me to know whereabouts to put my paint. So that took me quite a while to get it exactly as I want it. I want it to be the, the, the gap to be getting slightly larger as it goes round because I'm going to fan the flowers out if I can. So I've decided to do two different colours of flowers. So one, they've both got one of the greens in, both got either the orange or the brown because they're very rich, warm colours. Um, either the pink or the purple and then the gold or the pewter colour. So I feel like there's quite a good balance between the, the two sets of colours. So I think I'm oh, I'm just going to start putting some puddles on and just see. See, I think it may change. I may have to change things as I go. The idea is that I'm going to be putting the, the puddles around the outside of this um, of this string. So to start with, I'm going to try and go very small with my puddles. So it would be, I just think, so I'm just going to alternate these two dark colors.
Right, that's my outline done. So I'm just going to try and lift this up. So it's pulling the paint slightly, but that doesn't matter at all because I'm about to put more paint on. Right, that took ages. So that's my first ring of, um, of puddles down. I know already that I've made these too close together. So it might they might not look like an individual blooms by the end of this. It might just look like almost like a garland of, of flowers. So I'm going to put um, some cell activator in the, set, in the centre of each spot. The cell activator is three parts Australian Floatrol to one part paint um, measured by weight. So I'm just going to do a nice spot in the in the middle of each puddle. It doesn't need to be a big spot, just a little bit on. All right, I'm going to blow a few of these around. Um, Right, as opposed to these being blooms, I'm actually finding I've only got enough room to blow this way and this way, as opposed to in all directions, because I've packed them in far too close, unfortunately. But that doesn't necessarily matter. So I'm going to just keep going. Right, that's my initial flowers, blooms. I actually really pleased with that. I actually really like it. I've still got a long way to go with this, but so far so good. Which way did I start? I started up this way. So the centre is nicely, tightly packed in there. But what I'm going to do, I think probably from about this point here, is just starting introducing a little bit more. The odd extra flower around the outside just to start thickening this up and then probably at about this point it's going to start getting a lot wider so just I'm just going to do the odd extra bloom now and then I'm going to blow around a little bit more 
with the ones that I've got there. So I have finally, finally finished. This painting has taken me ages. Um, the most difficult bit was the composition and trying to get that swirl just right. Um, trying to get this band of white to be roughly even all the way around was really difficult. I put some blooms along the edge here. So this was totally covered, um, no negative space, but then that didn't look right. So I scraped that off. I've added some more, more of the white. I am now happy with it. So I say blooms, it's bloom. It's a bloom technique with Dutch pour recipe paint. Uh, so it's kind of my bloom technique. So it's different to, to the traditional one. Um, and what I've got is instead of lots of blooms, I've got, they're all sort of mixed up. They're all sort of mushed in together a little bit. I ended up blowing around the edges to try and reduce the white in the middle so that they look like they all overlap and they all blend in together. So it just looks like a bit of a, a whirlwind of blooms, really. Um, the colours and the sparkle is amazing. When this dries, I think it's going to look absolutely gorgeous. It's going to be so shimmery. Look at the shimmer there in the white. I've never done a pearl white base before. I've done a pearl pink or a pearl violet, I think it was, but not the pearl white before. Um, just look at the colours. You can see every single colour I've used. The green, the turquoise, the pink, the purple, orange, gold, bronze. I, the, I'd say that actually the only colour I can't see probably is that pewter colour, but it blends in with, with the other colours. So it's there, but it's just not an obvious colour. Just look at that sparkle. So where, where I put the cell activator on, you've got some beautiful sections of lacing. Some of the lacing like there, it's got a little bit swallowed up. It just doesn't matter. Um, I really like it. It definitely looks to me like um, the wind. Uh, uh, the wind is blowing all the, the autumn leaves, all the autumn flowers around. Great, so I'll be back when it's dry. What an amazing way to end this series of paintings. Six autumnal paintings, all with the same colours. This is my favourite. I, not intentionally, I had no idea this was going to be my favourite, but the last one, I've, it's, and I'm ending on a high. I'm so, so happy with it. I'm, what I'm happy with is the shape. I've managed to control the paint well enough to get the real precise swirly shape that I, I, I'm really happy with. Um, that they're dried, they dried exactly as they were wet. They're not really blooms, but it doesn't matter. There is a kind of Dutch pour bloom technique and they, it's definitely not blooms, although there's an element of blooms in there, but instead it's just this wonderful jumble of colors with some lacing, some cells. Um, it's just so pretty. I'm absolutely in love with this color. This is the pearl white, but it looks cream. It looks, look how iridescent it is if I move it around. It just looks like a really warm color. Oops, sorry, I'm out of focus. Let me just get back in focus. 
it just looks like such a, a rich, rich warm colour, not white at all. Um, and you can see all of the, the indentations or the, the texture, should I say, in that white. Um, you can see very clearly the gold as well and just quite how iridescent that is. So it's definitely a gold and a quite creamy whitey colour. Um, there were a few areas I had to paint over once it was dry. You can still faintly see a dark shadow under there because the colours had leaked underneath the white. So I've just gone over the top just to try and um, soften them so you can't really see them. Um, and I'm so happy with this edge now. I originally had flowers going all the way down, but I just decided the composition wasn't right. So I'm so pleased I removed them. My favourite bit has to be the centre. I absolutely love that centre. So you've got the lacing. It looks like an eye, actually. Oh, I've not noticed that before. But I love just how precise that swirl is. And I'm so happy with all of these edges. I like these really choppy, irregular edges. Um, and of course, the design goes beautifully over the edges. It just drips so nicely down the edges. So really happy, six out of six done. So thank you so, so much for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel. If you hit the all button, you'll be notified of all my future videos as I upload them. Great, thanks for watching everyone. Bye.